is graduation season, and whether it is high school or it is college, it is time for everyone to seize the opportunities ahead of them. And there's a great book Dr. Nick and I are going to talk about regarding that. Great to see you. Good morning. So there are some tips by the Admiral. Yes. And it's called Make Your Bed. Yes. Admiral uh, William McRaven. I saw the video of him giving a speech at a graduation. Yes. Huge graduation. Yeah, Texas. And from that speech came this book. But it's, he starts off with, with make your bed. <laughs> now and tell us why. Then, well, he, it, it, he's, he's suggesting that, and I thought it was so fascinating because we're talking about the military. Oh, yeah. And he, he was, was a thinking, SEAL. And he, he was training for Navy SEAL, and every morning uh, the commander would come in to check the bed, corners tucked, the pillow at the right place, it, almost OCD-ish. And, the, and he says that the reason why it was so important is because you want to start your day with completing something. Mm. And then, because, and, and you feel good because it sounds mundane. Something. Like, does it really very matter mundane. If, my, if my bed is perfect? It's, it's very mundane. But again, when you take it in and you interpret it, it's you've done. So, you've the first thing you've done in the morning was do something. Mm -hmm. So you've completed. But I love the fact that he says that at the end of the day, if it's been a horrible day, you could at least come in and say, "Well, that was done." <laughs> Well, <laughs> and, and, and I, Whitney, the reason why it struck me, because I, I think like most of us out here, we've all not made our bed. Right. And when I, the times that I haven't and I come in and I see it unmade, there is a little bit of a funk. Is there? Yeah, in me, there is. It's like, gosh, I couldn't even make the bed. <laughs> you know, and, and so I think that there's something to it. But what, what really struck me about it was that, and this is why I think it was so important at this particular time of year, it was really about empowerment. It was really about something you can do and need to do. It, it wasn't about entitlement. It wasn't about I'm going to do this for you. Uh, I'm going to. I'm going it, it was all about you have to make the bed. You have to be daring. You have to uh, what, that be a sugar cookie. <laughs> tell, you I, tell him. You read. You read some of it. I you know did. what the sugar cookie means. I did. I did. Well, in Navy SEAL training, uh, they would oh, bless their hearts. Bless their hearts. Yeah. And uh, sometimes they were up for six days, hell week, and then they had to roll all around in the sand. Yes. Hence the comparison yes. to the sugar cookie. But they had to get in the water. They had to get wet. Yes. And, and then, then roll. roll, and then roll, and then work all day with the sand on them. So, so his the, thing was get over being a sugar cookie. Get, uh, Just yes. Sometimes you're going to have to be a sugar Sometimes you're going to have to be a sugar cookie. And it was interesting the way he framed it because he said when he would ask the commander why, why do that, and the, the, the answer was that life isn't fair. And you have to learn early, early, early in life that life isn't fair. And, I mean, I, you, you've heard me say it over and over again. It just isn't. Right. You know, bad things happen to great people, and life can throw up thunderstorm at us on our graduation day outside right and it just does but but it was also interesting that that you one of the reasons why you had to do it if you made a, even the tiniest of infractions so it also I think says something about that there are consequences mm -hmm. to our behavior and then he says don't ring the bell Tell the, me. The, in, in the in the world that he was trained in they would have bells and apparently if you rang the bell you were saying I can't do it or I give up. I give up. I want out of here. I want out of here. And he says that, that you never want to ring the bell. You want to have that grit, which is a kind of a great word of, mm. I can do this. I can get this job done. I can finish this task. I can jump endure. this hurdle. I can endure. Yeah, with persistence and with, with grit. I, I just think that's a great word, grit. And, and what, what's also interesting, though, is that the bell is there. Mm. As if somehow it almost needs to be there to remind us that, we do have the freedom to quit, yes. But but we want to almost challenge ourselves. You know, it's it, it, so it, you're not powerless. You're not powerless. And and one of the things that I like so much about the way he phrases it is that it's really internal competition. You're competing with yourself. Mm. You see the bell, which means it's a possibility. But you say, no, I can do this. Yes. Don't you know what? I'm, the greatest competitor is ourselves. We, we're, this is basically what he's saying. You're competing with yourself. Yes. You're, you're always pushing yourself harder. Again, who, all, who always feels like making the bed every morning? <laughs> or who wants to be a sugar cookie? You know, or who wants to constantly feel like that, that, that it, as he says, failure is important? 
there was an interesting th uh, part in here, and we talk about dynamics and, and people, where he says that uh, they were up all night and um, they were waiting for someone to quit, but, but they were so miserable and they were so cold. That was it, they were wet. It was really frigid out there. And they started singing. But yes. he told them not to, but they did anyway, which really shocked me. Yes, yes. Because they were also obedient yes. as seals. And he, he, I think the phrase he uses is sing while you're in the mud. <laughs> I believe he's, I, I think that's, if I remember correctly, it's, it's that you, you take that opportunity to kind of sing your way and out he, of it. And they felt better. It, and they felt better. They, and well, as you know, a group. You're, you're talking to a musician. So I, I mean, I, that was one of the things that really impacted me was the power of music and singing in the midst of the pain, which, you know, we're, we're reminded of in the slave days. That's basically how so many slaves survived. Oh, right. You know, with, with humility I say that because that's just what I read. Of course, of but course. But there was a lot of that, and there that's is. where the great spirituals came, mm -hmm. you know, from the that. The power of song. And, and he talks about hope in the book. He talks about never lose hope. Uh, that, that there's always something you're wanting to strive for. It's, it's really a very empowering book. And the, one of the reasons why I think it's important for us to say this today is because our culture sometimes moves us into more and more of let me do it for you, yes. parents. Let me do it for you. And that is not, that's not what this book is saying at all. Mm -hmm. Nobody's gonna make your bed. You're gonna learn how to make your bed. And it's great stuff, Whitney. As this it's, generation moves forward, it's real easy to um, try to pick up the pieces of your children every time, it, be it high school or college graduation, and say, I'll fix it, or I'll send yes. you $500, or yes. I'll continue to pay your cell phone bill till you're 40, or <laughs> your car insurance till you're 50. I mean, That's we right. do see parents do that. That's right. But his advice is, that's not the let way to do their, it. They've let them got, sail their own ship. They've got to sail their own ship. They've got to make mistakes. They've got to fall off the bike. They've got to maybe, I don't want anybody to ever flunk a, a, an exam. But you know, I remember, I don't know if I've ever said this, if I may real quick. I'll never forget, I was a sophomore in college and I was taking American history. And he, he was a brilliant lecturer. And I flunked the first exam. Oh. I flunked the first exam and he, he called me into his office, and his office was sitting outside. There was a bench, because he came from Hammond. And we sat, I'll never forget it. We sat on the bench, and he said, this is, he said, this is not you. I know this is not you. I know you can do this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what happened. He said, but I know you can do this. He said, so we're gonna throw away this exam, oh. and we're gonna start all over from today. Do you know I made an A in that course? Oh. I promise I'm not saying it to brag. Right. I'm saying it because that it's, it's, and he kept saying, this is you. But Whitney, I'm thinking, what, what, what would I have become had he not encouraged me, empowered me, said, look, we're throwing this away. You could do this. That is rare. Because I'm not sure why I made the F, but I, I float. Yes. And isn't that <laughs> interesting? All these, all these uh, years later, you don't remember why you did so poorly on the test. You just remember that you got a second chance. I remember him looking at me and saying, basically, I believe in you. This is not you. Mm, yeah. That's, that's, that's what I think he's saying in this book, is whatever we may think of ourselves, come on, we can do it. Yes. Well, I love Admiral McCraven, too, for what he says about... If, and he told this to the graduating class of like 8,000. He said, if every one of you just touched 10 lives. Yes, 10 lives. And those 10 lives touched 10 lives. And those 10 lives touched 10 lives. We could change the entire world. Yes, yes. And that's only 10 people. Yes. We can all do that. It, 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 absolutely. And in addition to that uh, important point about we can change, he also talks about it. Don't be afraid to ask people to help you paddle because it takes a, takes a lot of people to paddle. And they were back to, you know, does it take a village or doesn't it? And it does. We're all kind of connected in some way and we have to help each other. I had a situation recently where someone said, I just won't reach out for help. I said, well, you're gonna need to because you can't walk right, very well. Oh. <laughs> you're gonna need people to help you get into the car. Oh. And she said, I'm just very independent. And I said, well, you can be independent all you want, but you're also 74 years old and you're gonna have to get some help. So you see how kind of it, it's part of the I can is I can ask. Mm -hmm. Thanks so much, Dr. Nick. More of Weekends with Whitney after this.